Hello, I'm back again. Welcome to video number eight. The last video was all about putting the gearbox into the bike and now this one is just about a few little bits of housekeeping on the bike before I actually take it out on the road. My prime concern here is just to go through everything again to make sure everything is nice and tight and also to take the seat and tank off and just check the tappet clearance. Uh, there's another little issue which links back to a previous video which I'd like to share with you. Uh, you may recall at the end of video number six I talked about and showed you a little bit of a distraction and uh, it was something I enjoyed making on the lay that involved uh, making up a little uh, a little pipe that was going to screw in where a dipstick was. This is on a friend of mine on an engine driven compressor and the reason for all of that really was that the fuel was vaporizing on its simple gravity feed the fuel was vaporizing because of all the waste heat. There's the waste heat from the engine and also the waste heat from the compressor it was driving. The compressor runs up to about three and a half thousand psi so there's an awful lot of uh, waste heat as you can imagine like any compressor it's an adiabatic compression so there's a lot of heat there so anyway by making this little uh, adapter the plan was to run a, a, a diaphragm pump and indeed I've shown uh, I've had some feedback now from the man who installed it and uh, I'm going to include that so if it just shows you the thing being installed and actually functioning so with the engine running there's a torrent of fuel being pumped back to the fuel tank so there's a little bit of tidying up on the fuel lines and so on but as an experiment it seems to have worked very well anyway the next thing to do now is whip off the seat and tank and expose the rockers so i can set the tappets just have a look at this well cylinder head is five degrees it certainly feels a little bit colder than that hello I'm back again and uh, as you can see I've got a small little finger gauge touching the top of the rocker I'm going to move the camera so you can see the indicator in a minute but essentially what I do is when I'm setting the tappets I set the inlet when, just as the exhaust valve is opening and I set the exhaust valve just as the inlet is closing and that means then that the follower is definitely going to be on the base circle of the cam. So this just shows you the little finger gauge. Uh, you can bend this finger around to any uh, any position and then as long as this is pretty well at, at 90 degrees to the surface that's moving you don't end up in, sort of introducing all sorts of errors. I've repositioned the camera now so you can see the little indicator. Uh, in effect the rocker arm is is pushed down now in effect taking all the slack this ball is pushed into the push rod and the clearance between the other end of the rocker and the valve is at a maximum. So if I just push that up, you can see that's going to go, hang on, that's going to go down to 8 thou. That's okay. That's moved 8 thou. And then if I push it down here again, it goes back to zero again. So in effect, I've got 8 thou of movement on that, which is exactly what it should be. 
I've had to tilt this little indicator just to get in there but uh, it should be possible for you to see there's zero and then it goes up to six thou so I'm happy enough about that so in effect just checking no need to adjust anything which is uh, good I'm back on the lathe again and as I mentioned uh, base circles I thought it might be interesting to just sort of uh, inform and illustrate what I mean by that this is the original camshaft I got with the bike in 1980 something 82 uh, it's, it was originally an MSS model which had rather a gentle cam which meant that it would be ideal for pulling a for pulling a sidecar and uh, it wasn't long before I, and as soon as I realized that I threw that I, I took it out and I installed a 17 slash 8 because that's the venom cam now normally you see these with uh, the gear wheel but this part here is on a taper and you just push the cam out and push the new cam into the gear wheel as it happens I needed eventually to machine the edge of this and also machine away the little uh, the edge on the on the gear and uh, I needed to weld the two of them together and machine it away because I found despite the fact that there's a press fit and a taper on this part that the cam actually rotated in the gear and altered the valve timing slightly uh, when I was uh, using the engine so anyway look that's just a bit of a side event really what i've done is i've stuck a little bit of uh, masking tape onto this cam and what i want to show you is where the base circle is uh, i'll put a little mark there as you can see the there's nothing happening as i rotate the cam here this is in effect the base circle a little bit of rock on that spindle so the needle moves a little bit on the indicator but essentially it's only when you come around to here that you get the quietening ramp which takes the tappet clearance up and then you get onto the flank of the cam and then you end up starting to open the valve so there's quite a lot of stuff going on here and then you come over the side the valve is now starting to shut and then you uh, round about here I'll put a mark there round about there you can see where the base circle has re-established itself and then that's and it is this point now where you need to set the the tappets and that applies to both sides now generally speaking if you roughly speaking if you look at the end on view of the cam you'll see that it's the lobes are disposed at 90 degrees to one another <clears throat> One of the other things which complicates things and the motion of the valve itself is the fact that the followers have got a radius on them. So as you can imagine, if I just look at this, the contact position for the uh, for the for the follower on the cam is going to start and then sweep along the whole thing and then finish off and where the valve then closes gently. Uh, that's not a very clear indication but the option is for me to take the engine apart and I don't really want to do that I always end up setting the tappets with the cylinder uh, at the cylinder head end of the push rods mainly because I don't really like having to take off that uh, that cover over the cam and the gears because all those little screws uh, well how many thousands of times can you screw in and screw out those little screws without ultimately wearing the, the threads out so it's all nicely sealed up it's all tight and it's secure and it is achievable to adjust the gap up at the cylinder head and indeed measure the gap effectively anyway there you are that's where the base circle starts and it remains all the way around to there and it is in this area of the cam that you need to set the tappet gap I thought a little bit of a demonstration would be good. The cam normally turns in this direction and as I've been saying you need to adjust the tappets when the cylinder is on the base uh, or the, the cam follower is on the baseline. So here's uh, the rearmost lobe is the inlet. So when that is down 
that is when the lobe is pointing downwards. That means that the follower is definitely on the on the base circle, and that means that the exhaust valve over here is just starting to open. So that's the first position for doing the inlet. And then if I rotate this around now to when the exhaust is ready for setting, that means that the the inlet is just closing. The inlet valve is just closing and that's when you set the exhaust tappet. Well, I'm back in the workshop again and I've got the bike on the bench. Uh, I had, uh, I couldn't resist it. I couldn't, uh, the, the sun was shining. I got the old engine going and off I went for a spin. Uh, I was very pleased with the overall result except for the outrage of having a chain case oil leak. For years this thing has been well, it hasn't leaked. It's been a continent oil ch uh, chain case instead of the proverbial one, which uh, drips and leaks and uh, is a bit of a disgrace. So I, this is the seal that I had in it. It's one of these rubber lip seals and it just slowly pushes up against the clutch, which rotates there. And uh, I suppose I should have known better. But whenever you disturb something and put it back together, it's almost inevitable that things will not settle down in the same position. So I think the problem here is that the position of this casing ended up slightly different with the gasket. And also, I think the the dimensions of the clutch itself were a little bit different. And that meant that the clutch surface here wasn't pushing on this as much as it should have. So what I'm going to do this time, I've just taken this out and cleaned the little trough. I've got a new felt oil seal which I'm going to put in. I might have to trim that a little bit to make it work, but I think that's going to be a better bet. And uh, that's that's where I am right now. So no big deal, just a little bit of housework to get this thing installed and get it back on the bike and then next time i hope to get a camera attached to me or the bike and take the bike out for a spin and show you the rev counter and what revs are doing what uh, what the engine revs are at what uh, in different gears uh, apart from that there's nothing else to report a slight apart from a slightly notchy gear change as you can see, I've got a change, uh, an op a range of options here in terms of leverage ratio. So I might even need to put uh, another hole here. So that's something which uh, I can play around with. Right, as you can see, I've just installed this new felt seal. Uh, it was quite a tight fit and the little ledge surrounding it. I've secured that with some silicone or TV and that will uh, that will dry and that will hold that in adequately. It's actually quite firm at the moment, but once that gets a load of oil soaked into it, as the clutch lifts, this will this will contact the clutch. The oil will lubricate it and indeed at times until it settles in and finds its own appropriate dimensions and thickness. Uh, it's quite possible this will act as a brake on the clutch and stop it turning. All of that I can live with because it'll change as the felt gets scuffed away. It's not going to do any harm and it'll come out the drain bung here. So that's about it. I'll just have to put all this back together. And uh, another thing which I did many, many years ago, I stuck on some, some uh, thin pieces of metal, a bit of brass, a bit of aluminium, and I put a hole here, so I in effect reduced the, di the diameter of this as much as I possibly could, so as to be sure that there's only scope for the clutch parts to stick through here, and that just is further restraint for any oil that's likely to want to try and escape. As it happened on this occasion, uh, the oil leak was catastrophic, and it was just coming down here, running along and falling off the casing, and rather make it a mess onto the bike which is completely unacceptable. Okay, I've got to put it all back together now. Well, I'm back again. Definitely in need of a haircut. Uh, my next road test has had to be postponed slightly. I've got a severe problem with wet sumping, which I wasn't banking on. So what I need to do now is just I've drained the oil. I need to take out this little valve and have a look at it, possibly machine a new seat on it and try and sort that out because uh, I 
like the idea of having thick 50 weight oil and then just gently warming the bike up that's not a problem but it is a problem when you can't kick start the damn thing so uh, I got to deal with that because otherwise the bike isn't going anywhere anyway it's all fun and games it's all part of what uh, of what constitutes owning one of these old things so without further ado I'm going to leave it at that and uh, start working on this uh, or start disconnecting stuff here and I'll try and rearrange the camera so you can see what's going on. Right, the plan is very simple. I just need to undo this union here and then disconnect this pipe from the little ball valve chamber but I need to seal this up as well with some tape that will stop the oil draining out through the oil pump if I can't sort this out this evening and because uh, the last thing I want to do is have a pipe full of air because the pump may not uh, draw that through so there you go there's the first I'm committed now So I need to do something about plugging that. Well, I might just leave that and see how quickly the oil drains away. Okay, that's an option. I'll put something in there. Let's get this off now. Inevitably, there will be oil all over the place when this comes out. I wonder if I can... Uh... I wonder if I can just quietly move this in to minimise the mess. Oh. Well, that wasn't too bad. Right, this is now securely mounted in the vise. I'm just going to give this a little tweak. Now there's a little ball bearing here which I have to be careful about. And there's also a spring. Hmm. Well, that's now on the floor. Right, no harm done. So there's the little spring. As you can see, it's quite a feeble little spring. It appears to be okay, it's not cracked or anything, so I can stick that back in there. And then there's the valve seat itself. I need to, well, there might be a little bit of wear on that. Hmm, I need to have a look at that in greater depth. I need to clean it. Right, I've just trimmed a small paintbrush. Uh, which is a nice diameter, it's a slight taper, and that's going to fill this hole. And that will stop the column of oil, which is already ever so slightly starting to disappear. By tomorrow now, that will all have drained away into the crank casing, and this tube then will be full of air, and that'll be a problem. So by seeding it up here, I'm happy with that. That'll stay filled with oil, and uh, then I'll be able to deal with that tomorrow morning because it's actually getting a bit cold. It's actually a beautiful evening here and the, the bird song is wonderful. So, but for all of that, it's getting a bit cold. Right, I'm back on the lathe again. And as you can see, I have this little valve seat mounted in the chuck. And indeed, I've just been checking the alignment with the dial gauge. 
There are several machining operations relative to this surface. First of all, you've got the flange, you've got the threads, and then you've got the, the horizontal surface and then the vertical surface for the for the hole where the valve seat is. The valve need the ball needs to sit on a sharpish edge just there. And uh, so what I've done is I've just put this in. It's pretty well on center now. Uh, and that means that in effect, the flange, the threads, and the general geometry of the host, this whole thing is going to be pretty well on center. So uh, that's about ready for machining now. So I have uh, I have a little. Let me just swing that out of the way. I've got a boring bar here, which should just go in and kiss the surface, and then freshen up the bore, just so that there's a nice sharp angle all around. It's going to work nicely. just put this into the tank first of all seal that up and then I will loosely assemble this part onto the union which uh, is attached to the oil pipe which then goes down to the engine and then I can fill this up like a funnel with oil and then assemble it with the spring and the ball there might be room to do that and of course on the upper side of this once I put oil in the fuel t in the oil tank I mean that's all gonna fill up so I think that might be the best bet so, fun and games, but worth the effort. Well, as you can see, I've got a few more bits of security wiring done. This little non-return valve or anti-siphon valve is now installed and I'm just going to kick start the old bike and start it up. It's always a little bit tense waiting for oil to return back to the oil tank because I've drained the crank casing, I've refilled the oil tank, I know this little oil line here is full and there's only a little bit of air in this so I just hope that all of that gets drawn into the engine and then the oil circulation will be complete and I'll see it pumping back. I might even see about trying to take a photograph of what's happening in there. You can just about see the pipe where the oil returns. Anyway, it's a bit in the way for me to try and start the thing, but I'll see what I can do. video to a conclusion. I'm aware of the length of it. Uh, I've also decided to restrain myself when it comes to the next road test. I said initially that I would just uh, bring a camera along and record things but there's no point in me recording uh, events when in fact I may end up slightly unintentionally transgressing the bloody speed limit. So I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to document it anyway. So the next time you see me burning around on this old thing will be on a track day. 
But uh, for all of that, there's still things I need to do related to all of this. It struck me that one of the things that would be very interesting would be to take the old gearbox apart. I found some old photographs, and I think the last time the insides of that old thing saw the light of day was in 2006. And uh, I'm not sure about that, but it's seen a lot of action and it's been together for a long, long time. So long, in fact, I've no records of it apart from some photographs. So that's probably going to be the next video. I shall take the, uh, the, the old gearbox apart and uh, the plan is to restore it and make sure that if this thing blows up or fails in any way, that I can put the old four-speed gearbox back in and keep the bike going. So that's about it. It was nerve-wracking waiting for the oil to slowly, I could see the oil level in the tank dropping and dropping and dropping, but it, and of course obviously it gets pumped into everything, all the journals, uh, the big ends, the cans, the spray bar to lubricate the followers and so on. Definitely grounds, no matter what bike you have, for not experimenting to see how low you can get the tick over because all that does is slow down the rate of oil propagation and indeed on something like an old triumph where the cams are thrashing around in space without a, dra a direct blast of oil you can actually get metal on metal with very little oil lubrication on the on the on the cams and followers anyway look that's enough for now uh, this is the end of video eight I can't believe how many videos it's taken to cover all this, but for me now, this old thing is fit for the road. It's working well. The only fine bit of tuning I have to do is just to, to put a bit more mileage on it and then decide on the ratio for the gear change pedal to make sure that I'm comfortable with that. And that is the end of that. So thank you very much for watching. And uh, well, I hope to see you again at some stage. I'm gonna start taking the old the original gearbox apart now and uh, I'll record all that. That might be of interest. Thank you very much. Bye bye.